Cradles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, this is uh, Masking Putty. It's uh, from MIG um, and it's great stuff. Let me show you. It's, uh, it's basically like um, blue tack ish kind of substance. Uh, it's a stretchy material and you use it for masking up, uh, well, whatever you like really. Um, so you, you stick it on to the model, you spray, and then when you're done you peel it off. It's very good stuff. Uh, I bought this tin a while ago, and I hasten to add I did buy this, it wasn't given to me. Um, and I've really enjoyed using it. And I've had people say to me, well yeah, I really like this stuff, but it's really expensive. And yes, it is very expensive. This tin, uh, I bought this at a show from a dealer, it was £16. Um, I have not seen it any cheaper than that anywhere else. In fact, in most places, it's considerably more expensive. So yeah, that's a bit of an issue. However, there may be an alternative. This. This is Tobar Smart Putty. Um, and this was suggested to me uh, in the comments on one of my other videos by someone whose name I unfortunately can't remember, but whoever you are, thank you for the tip. We're gonna give it a try. Um, and I've been told that this is basically the same stuff but it's much, much cheaper. Uh, so this is $16.99, or I paid $16.99. This, I think I paid about f uh, four or five pounds for. So it's a third of the price. Um, obviously, this is a bigger tin than this. There's 80 grams in here. Uh, it doesn't actually say uh, how much is in here. It doesn't, it doesn't have a, a weight on it that I can see anywhere, unless I'm um, just missing it, but... What I thought I'd do quickly, first of all, is I've got my little scales here. So we'll just weigh it quickly and see how much is in there. 60 grams, that's kind of what I thought it was gonna be. So there is a bit less than there is in this one, but it is still massively cheaper. Um, you can buy 60 gram tubs of this kind of stuff from um, various other people like Green Stuff World do one and things like various other people do but again they're sort of 10 to 12 pounds for 60 grams this is about five or six so it's much cheaper um, one of the other things that I do quite like about it as, as you probably just saw it comes in a little plastic bag um, one of the things that I was told about this stuff when I first bought it by the dealer he said whatever you do don't store the tin on its side or upside down because what happens is it will gradually creep down and, and basically glue the lid on <laughs> so yeah um, anyway that's all beside the point so what we're going to do is we're going we're to try this instead of this now how are we going to do that we're going to use this uh, this is a wing uh, from a model uh, I can't remember the name of the model um, Although it's, it's basically the other wing of the aircraft I did in the speed painting video, which is uh, this one. Now, uh, <laughs> I, I put a Japanese roundel on it apparently because I thought it was a Japanese three engine cargo plane. Apparently it's Spanish. So anyway, there you go. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. Um, so what we're going to do basically is a similar kind of thing to we did to this on here, but we're going to use this as our masking putty. So. Let's get on with it. So to start with, I'm going to give it a lick of uh, primer um, just to unify all the colours and everything where I've sanded it down. So yeah, the whole point of this is just to uh, unify all the colours, give us a, a, a nice plain base to work on uh, without having to strip all of the original paint off of the whole thing. So this is the easiest way to do it. And over the top of that, we're going to go with some uh, all clad gloss black base. I've got several of these um, gloss black primers. Uh, I usually use the Vallejo one, but uh, this all clad one's not bad. It gives quite a good result, but I have found you have to give it quite a few coats to get a decent finish. And the next step is the lacquer, this all clad two. I love this stuff, it's really good. Yes, I am very partial to this all clad lacquer. It gives an amazing finish and you just pour it straight in the gun and spray it. There's no messing about with it. So the next step is some uh, gloss varnish. Give it a couple of coats of that. 
A lot of people don't like this Humbrol varnish, but I must admit I have never ever had a problem with it. I've used maybe half a dozen bottles of it over the last couple of years and it's always been fine for me. Right, now the varnish is dry, we'll give it a, a spritz of this um, hairspray. Uh, and that'll allow us to chip the paint later. So we'll just give it a quick couple of coats of this and then let it dry. Now you can decant this into an airbrush, but uh, I find it's not really necessary, especially for large surfaces like this. Just spray it on. There we go. Now we'll just give that a minute or so to dry. It doesn't take long. So now we're going to give the underside of the wing uh, a coat of XF83 medium C grey 2. Well, I must admit I'm not going to go mad with this because obviously we're looking at masking uh, using the putty rather than the, the final paint finish. So I'll, I'll just do this one fairly quickly. Right, let's unpack this stuff and see what it comes out like. So they put it in a bag which is kind of good in a way because uh, it stops it sloshing about in the tin. But of course it is plastic we've got to get rid of. Um, but never mind, let's uh, see if we can get it out. Uh. Ah, there we go. Well it certainly feels a similar consistency, although it does feel slightly greasy. Uh, Let's get the other one out for a second. Yeah, see this, this feels greasy. And, and this one doesn't. Oh, pop. Um, Yes, if I if I wipe my finger over this, it comes away clean. If I wipe my finger over this, it comes away feeling greasy. But you know, let's give it a go and see how it works. It might just be because it's new. I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. All right. Let's see what this goes like. So the first thing we need to do is the uh, the edge of the wing, so that we don't get any on any paint on the underside of it. It does feel very similar in the hand. I have to say, it's got a very similar texture. Okay. Certainly seems to stick on all right. I'll give it that. Hmm. So far, so good. The greasiness I mentioned earlier, it does seem to disappear a bit once you've worked it in your hands a little bit. So maybe it's just where it's been in the packaging. All right, let's stick the rest of this on. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Let's um, give it a coat of colour. So the first colour I'm going to use on the top is XF52 uh, Flat Earth. Stop laughing at the back. So unlike the last one of these wings that we did, I'm actually going to do what I normally do and paint the entire wing brown to start with and then we'll put the green over the top. I'll explain why later. Right, well that's dried very well. Uh, everything's looking good so far. Um, what I'm going to do now is just draw on the camouflage pattern, just very lightly with a pencil, um, just to give me an idea of, of where I'm going with the next bit. So Now you can, if you wish, obviously uh, use reference pictures and whatnot to uh, 
try and recreate you know a real aircraft or a real real camouflage scheme uh, in this case i'm just doing something rough and ready just for our purposes today right that'll do for that so what i'll do now is i'll mottle these brown bits and then we'll mask them up and paint the green right mottling um just to go over this again the idea behind mottling is just to break up the univer university uniformity of the color and make it uh, a bit less monochromatic so what we do is we take a fairly thin mix of paint at a fairly low pressure and we get quite close into the surface and we paint random swirls and blotches and all the rest of it and that just breaks up the monotony of the surface and makes it a little bit more interesting when the color coat goes over the top so what we do is we'll do this like this and then once it's dry we'll come back over it with the same color coat and but just a much thinner lighter mix like a filter and you can put as much or as little of this on as you want uh, it's really up to you you know whatever look you're going for there you go like that you'll see what i'm also doing is i'm keeping away from the panel lines i'm staying inside the panel lines as much as possible and what that does is it also creates like a natural shadow on the panel line so that uh, you don't have to worry too much about washes and things but you see what I've done here if you compare the two I've gone a lot heavier on this one so it really depends what kind of look you're after. So I'm just doing a couple of different things so you can see what kind of different effects you can get. And what I'll do on this end one is I'll do it a bit more uniform almost. So So you see there's there's less in the way of swirls and whatnot. What you can also do is go in kind of straight lines in the direction of the airflow. And it almost gives it a kind of windswept look, if you see what I mean. I know it sounds a bit weird, but but uh You see what I'm doing? I'm creating kind of streaks in the direction of the wind flow, airflow. You see? And then when we spray back over that, you, those those like windswept look will come through the paint. So anyway, that's um, that's that done. So what we'll do now is we'll get up a, a thin mix of our original uh, brown and spray it over the top. Right, so now we've got our thinned mix of, of flat earth and we'll just come back over it and just go over this again. But we want to go over it fairly lightly and you can see it starts to blend it. Now we, we want to be careful because we don't want to go mad with this because we want to keep that effect. So there you can see what I've done, just very, very lightly over it. Now one thing I will say is as the paint dries, the mottling underneath will become more pronounced. So keep an eye on that because you might need to go back over it again. Especially with like this one, this heavier one. So let's just go over this one. And you see I'm just going over it very, very lightly. Now this will obviously take more blending because it's a, a, a thicker colour, if you like, underneath. More pronounced.
Right, and then we'll go over the end here. So that's our light one. That's our kind of medium blotchy one. And that's our streaky one. So now we need to mask this off and then we can paint the green. Right, this is all dry now. So what we need to do is mask off these bits so that we can paint the green. So let's do that. Let's get our yeah. Ooh, masking putty again, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's like this. It's, it does feel kind of greasy in the tin. Um, but I say, when you work it in your hands for a bit, it, the, the greasiness goes away. So I think it's something to do with the packing process. But anyway. Uh, right, we just need a little bit for the end here. Probably about half that. One thing I will say about this is it doesn't stick to the kitchen paper quite so aggressively as the uh, as the MIG product. So there is that for it. Okay. Now when you're putting this on, um, make sure you leave a little bit visible of what you did previously so that the two colours blend together properly. And make sure you push the edges down reasonably firmly so that you get a nice transition i mean if you want the edges to be fuzzy uh don't don't push this down quite so flat let it let it stay proud of the surface and you'll get a bit more of a fuzzy edge but obviously you can play around with it and do what you want um so yeah that's basically what we're looking for i'll do these other bits and then we'll spray the green on right i think we all know what's coming next <laughs> yep RF Dark Green 2. Uh, let's put this on the wing. Now, if you're wondering why I painted the, bring, the wing completely brown when I was going to paint half of it green, um, it's something I've always done. And then I found out recently that someone put a comment on one of the videos saying that his uh, grandmother during the Second World War used to paint hurricanes. And this is basically how they did it. Uh, they would paint the whole thing brown and then they would use these rubber mat stencils to uh, paint the camouflage on. So, yeah. I like it when people share things like that in the comments. It's uh... Right, well, if proof positive were ever needed that this stuff is very, very similar to the MIG stuff, it does actually stick to the kitchen paper i put it down for a minute and i could barely get it off but anyway um i dare say some of you are probably wondering uh how long i left this uh like drying wise uh before i i'm doing this step well the answer I don't know for the second, but it was basically about three minutes. Uh, I sprayed the green on. I put the piece down. I gave the airbrush a quick clean out. I loaded it up with the deck tan. And then I picked this piece up and I started spraying again. So this kind of follows on from the whole, how long should I leave it to dry? question that gets asked so often not very long at all 
especially in a situation like this where you're basically spraying uh, an intermediate coat you really don't need to leave it very long so I mean like I say it's up to you if you want to wait 24 hours or whatever in between coats then you go ahead personally I've got more important things to do um, <laughs> sorry that sounded very childish um, there are certain things obviously I had some comments on the uh, the how long should I wait for it to dry video um, people saying oh you know you all you've talked about are, are things that dry quickly anyway well yeah because those are the kind of things where I see comments saying where people have sprayed like I have here and then say you have to wait for 24 hours. Well, no, you don't. Um, you don't have to wait for that at all. I mean, there are things that you have to wait for. Um, I mean, for example, if you use, uh, if you ever use rattle cans, um, you can actually smell them for a long time afterwards they'll, they'll dry very quickly but they take a long time to cure and uh you can you can smell it it's like there are times when i've made things and i take them in the house and my my missus immediately says right take that back out to the shed um and the reason being is because the varnish hasn't fully cured and you can smell it you can smell there's this you know sort of overpowering smell of solvent and it's because it hasn't finished out gassing um so yeah there are times when you do need to leave things but in the majority of cases with the majority of modeling products you really don't need to wait that long i mean like i say if you want to that is up to, entirely up to you but I'm not going to. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I'll get on with this mottling and then um, we'll come back and put the... Uh, put the green on top of it again. I thought I'd do another streaky bit there. I've, I've basically exaggerated it, but this is very good if you're doing... Um, aircraft with fabric wings where you can see the ribs and the spars uh, you go in between and it really does a good job of highlighting them right anyway let's put the green on right now for our thin down green again You see that kind of streaky effect on the wing there? It looks pretty good. Right, that doesn't look too bad, does it? Now, for the moment of truth, we need to take the, uh, take the putty off and see what it looks like. Right, here we go, moment of truth. Let's see how well this works. Ugh, a bit stuck in the corner there, there we go. Uh, now I must admit, I did have this with the other one, the other stuff, It eventually it grips the, uh, <laughs> the foam quite nicely, so uh, you have to be careful of that. But, Ugh, get off. It's coming off all right. Ugh. All right, there we go. Ugh. Let's get that off of there. Let's have a quick look at this. Uh, that actually looks pretty good. 
quite pleased with that. Uh, can't see any residue. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be any residue on it. Um, I think that's done a remarkably good job. Excellent. Right, now the last test is, can we get the paint out of this? Because obviously with the MIG stuff, you just mix it up and the paint just vanishes like magic. So um, let's give this a pudge around and see what happens. <laughs> it's disappearing. <laughs> Well, let's just see if there's any streaks of it in there. There's a couple of bits there. But that might just be where I haven't mixed it up very well. But, yeah. Now, you can see there are a few bits in here and there. But, of course, you might get that on the other one. It's black. You wouldn't even see those. So, yeah. Quite pleased with this stuff. Um... Let's wrap this up. So, um, Tobar Smart Putty. Uh, yeah, on the whole, this is <laughs> pretty good stuff. Um, so yes, I, I would certainly recommend this uh, if you're if you're looking for a cheap masking putty. Um, yeah, it, it's. I don't think it's exactly the same stuff, but it's certainly close enough that you're not really going to notice. Um, if you don't have the two side by side, you wouldn't notice. Uh, so, yeah, it's good stuff and it's a lot cheaper. I'll put a link, um, uh, an Amazon affiliate link in the uh, in the description below, which obviously you can buy it from there or you can shop around. You might get it cheaper elsewhere. I put those links in because they are an easy way for people to find the stuff that I use. Um, and if you buy through those, it gives me a little bit of money. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it, it helps me out. Uh, but obviously, you know, shop around. You may well find this stuff cheaper elsewhere. Um, actually, while we're on the subject, I've started up a Patreon. There's a link to that as well. So if you fancy throwing a, throwing a, a you know, bit of money in the hat, then that would be <laughs> very gratefully received. Um, but yeah, as far as this stuff goes, I would say use it. It's uh, much cheaper than any of the other putties and, and masking putties and that, that I've seen. And it seems to be, you know, just as good. So, yeah, I think that'll do for this one. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.